everybody and welcome to this lesson in which we're going to look at the DynamoDB database offered by AWS. Now DynamoDB is a fully managed NoSQL database service that provides fast and predictable performance with seamless scalability. DynamoDB lets you offload the admin burdens of operating and scaling a distributed database so you don't have to worry about hardware provisioning, setup and configuration, replication, software patching, or cluster scaling. Also it offers encryption at rest which eliminates the optional burden and complexity involved in protecting sensitive data. Now with DynamoDB you can create database tables that can store and retrieve any amount of data and serve any level of request traffic. You can scale up or scale down your tables throughput capacity without downtime or performance degradation and use the AWS management console to monitor resource utilization and performance metrics. It provides on-demand backup capability. It also allows you to create full backups of your tables for long-term retention and archival for regulatory compliance needs. You can create on-demand backups as well. Enable point-in-time recovery for your Amazon DynamoDB tables. Point-in-time recovery helps protect your Amazon DynamoDB tables from accidental write or delete operations. You can also restore that table at any point in time. And just for your reference, they store it up to 35 days by default. It also allows you to delete expired items from tables automatically to help you reduce the storage usage and the cost of storing data that is no longer relevant. Now some of the core concepts of a DynamoDB. First we have tables, items, and attributes. Now tables are similar to other database systems. Dynamo sto DynamoDB stores data in tables, which is basically a collection of data. Now each table contains zero or more items, which is a group of attributes that is uniquely identifiable among all of the other items. And then finally we have attributes. Each item is comprised of one or more of them. An attribute is basically a fundamental data element, something that does not need to be broken down any further. Now when you create a table, in addition to the table name, you must specify the primary key of the table. The primary key uniquely identifies each item in the table so that no two items can have the same key. It supports a partition key and a partition and sort key. Then you have secondary indexes. You can create one or more of them on a table. It lets you query the data in the table using an alternate key in addition to queries against the primary key. Now DynamoDB does not require that you use indexes but they give your applications more flexibility when querying your data. And then lastly, there are DynamoDB streams, which is an optional feature that captures data modification events in DynamoDB tables. The data about these events appear in the stream in near real time and in order that the events that they occurred. Now DynamoDB also supports eventually consistent or strongly consistent reads. Eventually consistent means that there will be a little bit of lag in terms of the consistency, whereas the strongly consistent means that that data is replicated in a matter of mere milliseconds. Now this table just gives you a good difference between a relational database management system or also RDS that AWS supports and the Amazon DynamoDB. Now just keep in mind that DynamoDB is schema-less and again uses a key value store. You can also specify the required throughput capacity and DynamoDB being a fully managed resource does the rest. Now DynamoDB also fully synchronizes on the back end the data across all of the availability zones within the region that you created the tables in. It also integrates very easily with other AWS services such as the Elastic MapReduce or EMR and can easily move data to a Hadoop cluster in the Elastic MapReduce. Now, some of the popular use cases are IoT, gaming, and mobile. And again, you guys can see a good differentiation between the two types of main databases that are offered by AWS. So let's log into our management console and see if we can create a database instance and see if we can access it through our EC2 instance. 